to another edition of the UK Law Weekly Podcast with me, your host, Marcus Cleaver. This week we're going to be looking at the case of BPP and Commissioners for HMRC. The citation for this case is 2017 UKSC 55. The name of the respondents in this case, BPP, will probably be familiar to the law students listening to this podcast because they are well known for providing books and education for a variety of subjects, including law. The way that the group of companies known as the BPP Group are set up is important for tax purposes, and that is partially the subject of this case. Between 1999 and 2006, a single company, BPP Holdings Limited, supplied both the education and the books. However, after 2006, it was BPP Learning Media Limited who provided the books, and BPP University College of Professional Studies Limited, who supplied the education. When it came to paying VAT, books are zero rated and education is standard rated, and so BPP did not account for the books. HMRC got involved in late 2012 when they issued an assessment and subsequent decision, stating that BPP should have actually been paying VAT on the books since 2006. BPP appealed this to the first tier tribunal, but HMRC were late in providing their statement of case as well as their disclosure. On reviewing this, BPP asked for further information within 14 days, and proposed to the tribunal that if HMRC were late once again, then BPP should win the case by default. In the end, the judge did give HMRC 14 working days to respond and noted that a failure to adhere to this time limit may result in them being barred from taking further part in the proceedings. This is known as a debarring order, and to use an analogy, it is a bit like getting a second yellow card in a football match for time wasting. In other words, it doesn't happen very often and is quite a strict and harsh application of the rules. HMRC did manage to get their answer in just in time, but it was clearly a rush job as it did not reply to all of the questions that BPP had identified. As a result, BPP went ahead and applied for HMRC to be barred from any future part in the proceedings. The assessments were withdrawn by HMRC, but they stood by the decision and that is now the only thing being appealed. Nevertheless, they still managed to continue being late as they supplied a defective disclosure statement and list of documents eight days after the deadline, and did not even submit a request for extra time until four weeks later. Taking all of this into account, the judge made a debarring order against HMRC. HMRC applied to have this lifted, but were unsuccessful, although they were allowed to appeal this decision. They did so, and the case moved up through the court hierarchy right up to the Supreme Court, where we will pick it up. The actual rules relating to debarring orders comes from the Tribunal Procedure First Tier Tribunal Tax Chamber Rules 2009, and the first conclusion drawn by the Supreme Court was that the judge in the First Tier Tribunal did make use of the correct rule in contrast to what HMRC had argued as part of their appeal. If the correct rule had been used, then the only time an appellate court should have actually intervened is if, as part of the original judgment, irrelevant material had been taken into account, relevant material had been ignored, or the decision reached was one that no reasonable tribunal would have reached. When the justices came back to look at the original decision, they found that there had indeed been a careful consideration of all of the factors relevant to the case, even where those factors are controversial. For example, the debarring order and subsequent decision represents a huge disadvantage to HMRC and has the potential to benefit BPP in a completely disproportional way, and that is by no means ignored. Furthermore, just because HMRC are a public body does not mean that they are entitled to special treatment by the tribunals. There was also an argument that actually seeking a debarring order was a disproportionate by BPP, yet it is fully within their rights to pursue this remedy. It may be that their successful application means that they get an unfair advantage in this case, and subsequently become unjustifiably enriched by the final decision in the tax case. But as the Supreme Court noted, that is sort of the point of debarring orders, and if it was any other way, that would undermine their actual utility. 
It was conceded that debarring orders are an especially harsh punishment to inflict during proceedings, and many judges in the first tier tribunal may have chosen not to allow BPP's application. There is, however, an important distinction between a harsh punishment and one that is unjustified in the eyes of the law. It was up to HMRC to prove that the order was unjustifiable, but this is already a high threshold to achieve before you actually take into account the repeated and innumerable delays caused by the tax authorities, combined with a lack of any sort of explanation or even apology for them. It was suggested that the judge in the original case had relied too heavily on case law and the civil procedure rules, which are not relevant. This is true to the extent that those sources of law are not directly applicable to tribunals, but it is important to note that broadly the same principles are used. With this in mind, the judge was actually correct to treat the civil procedure rules and related case law as persuasive authority when reaching her decision to the extent that they can be applied to the overall objectives that are essential to the functioning of the rules for tribunals. In particular, recent cases such as Mitchell and Newsgroup Limited 2014 are not irrelevant in the strict sense of the word, but it does contain some useful guidance when it comes to judges approaching cases in a fair and just manner. In other words, the judgment from the first tier tribunal was an especially good one, and in the end, HMRC did not get very close at all in their argument that it was unjustifiable. Overall, the Supreme Court were right to offer praise to the tribunal judge who made the original decision. As we said earlier on, a debarring order may be a harsh reaction, but it is within the power of the tribunal judge to take this course of action, and the justices of the Supreme Court have respected the autonomy of the tribunals by preserving that decision. Perhaps, however, the most interesting aspect in this case is the role of HMRC, whose actions can, at best, be described as completely lacking in any form of organisation, and at worst, showing an unbelievable amount of arrogance and lack of respect for the due process in the tribunals. The tax authorities have the power to make assessments and decisions, but they are not and cannot be the final word on these matters. The tribunals play an important role when there are grounds for appealing the actions taken by HMRC, as in this case involving BPP. How can the government's lawyers be so oblivious to this process to the extent where they ignore deadlines and fail to engage in the process by disclosing full information? The debarring order may be extreme, but will also hopefully act as a wake-up call to HMRC, who must now realise that they cannot treat the tribunals like their own fiefdom and that they are not exempt from any repercussions that might stem from their actions, or, in this case, lack of action. Frankly, this case is an embarrassment for the government from start to finish, and unless they do change their ways, this won't be the last time that they are subject to a debarring order from a judge who has endured enough of their incompetence. Well, thank you very much for listening to this episode of the UK Law Weekly podcast. Um, Thanks as ever to uh, bensound.com who provide the theme music. And also thank you to the people who take the time and effort to leave a rating and a review on iTunes. Very much appreciated. Remember, you can also follow the podcast on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Marcus Cleaver. And also visit the website at uklawweekly.com. Thanks for listening and I'll be back with another episode next week. But until then, bye!